Hello class, this is section 2.3 and in this video we are going to go through a heat equation example with boundary condition 0 on both sides and where the initial condition is a sum of sine functions. Recall that for product solutions, solutions of the form u equals fx gt where f is purely a function of x and g is purely a function of t, we can reduce it to two ordinary differential equations. The first equation, the one with respect to t, we can solve by using the separation of variables technique, and we get a general solution of the form gt equals constant times e minus k lambda t. The second equation, the one in x, is an eigenvalue problem. For this one, we can say that our eigenvalues are lambda equals n pi over L squared for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So those are the eigenvalues, and those are the only lambda for which we get a non-zero solution. And uh, corresponding eigen solution is going to be of the form sine n pi x over l. This implies that our product solutions must be of the form un xt equals e minus k n pi over l squared t sine n pi x over l for n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. And these product solutions may sometimes have a constant multiplied to it, but to keep things simple, we just assume that the constant is 1. Now we want to get an uh, initial condition of the form 2 sine pi x over l minus 7 sine 3 pi x over l plus 5 sine 4 pi x over l. But let's see what initial condition we get from these product solutions. un x0 equals, so the exponential term disappears, setting t equals 0 means that e to the 0 is 1. So that goes away and we are left with just a sine term. So sine n pi x over l. So it should be clear that we are not going to get the initial condition we want if we just use one product solution. But it seems that we can get that initial condition if we add three product solutions together. So let's give that a try. U x t, the solution we want, is going to be, so the first thing we need is a 2 sine pi x over l. So perhaps a 2 u1 will be good because um, setting u1 with t equals 0 will get the sign we need. We need minus 7 sine 3 pi x over l, so let's try minus 7 u 3 x t and the last term plus 5 sine 4 pi x over l plus 5 u 4 x t. That should do it and written out fully our solution is going to be of the form 2 e minus k pi over l squared t sine pi x over l minus 7 e minus k 3 pi over l squared t sine 3 pi x over l plus 5 e minus k 4 pi over l squared t times sine 4 pi x over l. And again, you can check that this solution indeed satisfies our initial condition because by setting t equals 0, we get exactly that initial condition.